Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us for Q School Online. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Today is all about color. So I have my colorful sarong on very, from very Mexico. Thank you. Um, we have a lot of color to talk about and color uh, products. So thank you so much for joining us. I am Maura McGinnis, and I am the Northeast Regional Sales Manager, and I am here with... I'm Mitali Aja. I'm a National Technical Sales Manager. Yay. So um, Mitali is joining me because he is our man on the inside who works answering the phones, helping with installations, troubleshooting projects and all in all before we <laughs> we ratchet it right up to engineering or product development he is our third line of defense Definitely. your rep is your first line of defense <laughs> your regional is your second Metali is your third yep. um, and your customer service person so that being said we're all here to help you and we just want to go through some of the basic things of what we offer and uh, how to look through them Hi, I did think one other thing we always aim to keep this at 30 minutes, uh, but there's a lot of content to go through. A lot. So obviously, we respect your time. Check the recording if you have to leave. Um, but we're going to aim to get to 30 minutes and then do some questions and answers. OK, now, all about color. Let's start by a little refresher course on our website. So for all of our products, you can get to our website. Here's our home page. That Qtran is always going to get you back home. Then in the banner, you have products to search from. We're going to start with any linear LED, because that's where our RGB, static color, and RGBW are located. All of our product categories have filters on the left side. We're going to select RGB, and boom, you've narrowed down to our RGB strip. Then we can select RGB, oh, sorry, dynamic white, fat fingers. Um, RGBW, dynamic white, now you've filtered down. So. We're going to select our RGBW. We always recommend that you go to our ordering guide rather than just the spec sheet. Our ordering guide has the most complete information. They all range about 12 pages. There's a lot of great install instructions, part number builders. Uh, in this one, you have your lumen and your wavelength information for your RGB, your whites, your circuit wattages, your details, your compatible extrusions how to build a fixture. I know I'm flying through this, but we're going to get into these details as we go through the uh, presentation. But in this document, you're going to find compatible power supplies, color metrics, photometrics, and all sorts of other really useful information. So we always recommend that master ordering guide or ordering guide. Um, Let's move to power supplies, because how do you power our LEDs? You can filter again to filter down to DMX. So we're going to talk about digital controls today. Um, there are multiple digital controls. We're going to focus on our QTM ELED DMX product. Um, and again, there's an ordering guide. Finally, how do you talk to your products? You might have a full control system on your project, or you might need a control system or a controller. So for us, it's under accessories. So you go to our accessories uh, thumbnail, and you'll find our DMX sticks. We call them sticks, even though they're flat rectangles. Um, and there are three of them with three different capabilities for different reasons. We're going to talk about them later. So that's our product page. There are your categories. And then there's filters. Lots of great information on our website. Um, ask for any help you might need. but. That's there for you. So let's get right into some going back to basics about color. So color, everybody knows R, G, and B. And um, those primaries make up all the colors in the world, over 16 million. It's a lot of colors. It's a lot of colors. My friend uh, Brian Gale likes to tell me there's only about eight good ones. 16 million colors, only about eight good ones. So looking at the um, graphic on the left, you know, is our primary Venn diagram. Um, and then you look on your right, this is something we're a lot more familiar with as lighting designers, because we're always looking at that block body curve. So we talk about the curve and we talk about where white lands on the curve, but today we're going to talk about the information around the CIE chart. And we're going to talk about nanometers and colors, right? So the nanometers is the number, the assignment of the wavelengths applied to the color that we see. The math, the 256 times 256 times 256, is the integer values of R, G, and B. It all goes together. On the next slide, just a reminder, in the visible spectrum, all we can see is 380 nanometers to 780 nanometers. But in general, LED chips are really going to live in the 450 to 700 
ish range. Um, you're not going to really get to those extremes. You might. There's a lot of good information out um, in the world from scientists and other folks about color and visible light in the spectrum, but this is just a quick refresher. So coming from here, we're going to talk about what we have and what colors we offer in products. So we have static color, RGB, which we refer to as dynamic color, and RGBW, which we also refer to as dynamic color. So our static color we offer in red, green, blue, and amber. It's very similar to our static whites. This is our amber. So our amber is a turtle-friendly amber. Um, our red is also turtle-friendly. We have all that information for you. And this performs an acts just like a static white strip. It's a single channel of control, two low voltage wires, and it dims as a single, single chip. RGB, RGBW, that's where we get into some control things. So let's go back to, and then we encapsulate our RGB and RGBW in different fixtures of um, our box, our Zala, and our worm, and our curve, and Coming soon, we're going to offer our new Verse family of fixtures with RGB. So since I have that here and I have a lovely pink for my, to <laughs> highlight my pink, um, this is our Verse 01. A few weeks ago, we launched our Verse family of products, our versatile family of products. So this is the 01, if, um, which has the edge. I'll put it against the black so you can see the edge of the light of our proud lens, Verso One Proud, and then we have our Verse Flush, which I also have dialed into a pink, as you can see, super flattering, um, and that's our Flush lens. So our RGB is behind there, and that's going to be available soon in our Verse family of fixtures. So going to the products that we offer, let's talk about the next slide, please, our RGB. So our RGB LED has been improved just recently. We stock, this is the first page of the ordering guide, and this indicates your series RGB 24, 24 volts, your wattage, 6.0 watts, and then your dry, damp, wet, or encapsulated. Your CCT is a, not a CCT, it's an RGB. Then your wires in and out, and then your cut lengths and your illuminated length. We have different, just like our static white has, um, different restrictions on lengths due to wattage and voltage drop, so do our colored products, and that's all available online, and we help you when we help you build your bills of material. So if you look at this uh, static, sorry, RGB, what we've done here, not that I have an old one to compare to, is we have a shallower chip. You can see this is, uh, this is probably what at about 50%. I think yeah. we have this dimmed down. Yeah. So this is red, obviously. It's a tricolor chip. It's a two inch cut point, but what we're really excited about is how close the diodes are and how shallow they are. So looking just down, you can see they're really shallow. And I've happened to land them right on top of two other fixtures. And this is the rigid torque with RGB and behind a diffused lens and the Boxa. So now our new RGB strip is, encaps we can encapsulate it in translucence and get a diode-free result. So that's um, really nice because now you have a nice color replacement in our QCAP product family with no diode imaging. So moving on to the next cut sheet, or first page of spec sheet rather, is our RGBW. So simply put, it's a tricolor chip. Now this is a different chip. So if we wanna zoom in on the overhead, I can sort of show the differences here. You can see there's a different substrate and a different chip array. So we have a tri still a tricolor chip as the basis of design with a white next to it. We're actually working on improvements to this PCB, but for now, this is what we have. This has a four inch cut point, which is an improvement to our previous product, which was actually 3.85. So we're moving from metric to imperial. Um, and we have selectable either 2700K as your white chip or 3000K as your white chip. So that is our RGBW. And then our next spec sheet is, and so that spec sheet will be um, updated. Again, in your master ordering guide, you'll see your um, dry, damp, and wet um, 
measurements, dimensions of what's available and what. So we can see the next one. So RGB is skinnier than RGBW, although not implied by this slide, but when you looked at them in my hand, you could see that one is thinner. And then the next slide will show our compatibility charts. So we always have compatibility charts in all of our LED packages. And so if you look at the last three columns, you're going to see what fits, which LED fits in which extrusion in which rating. So dry, damp, wet, or encapsulated, how and then which, which thing works. <laughs> So that being said, something we get asked for frequently is a wet option. Currently, our RGBW wet only works in our wide extrusion. We are working on improving that, as is evidenced by our verse family of fixtures. Pretty sure we're going to be able to do it in one of the verse. This is an example of the photometric data that is in the master ordering guide. So we use our static white spec sheet as a template. So obviously you're seeing a lot of zeros because a lot of these testing metrics don't apply to color. However, we want to keep consistency in what our spec sheets look like and our ordering guides look like. But what does matter is the X, the Y, and the Z. So where is this LED landing on the CIE chart? So looking at the third image, you can see how close to which nanometer our red is. Um, this becomes critical in certain projects where color matters, where, that, where the wavelength matters. So we're just providing that information for you. Um, just like all whites aren't the same and all 3,000 kelvins aren't the same, all reds or all blues or all greens aren't the same necessarily. So again, same ordering structure. The reason I put the big red circle on this one is because we were previously only offering it with encapsulated clear because the translucent really did not disguise the LEDs, but now it does. So when you specify your QCAP, you can put ENC slash TL and you're going to get this encapsulated diode free result from our QCAP product line. Huh. Okay. <laughs> the next thing that we wanted to talk about was how do you power them? So that's great. So here's the products. You want to use them on your, pro on your projects. We offer different digital options for controlling color. Like I said, we're really going to concentrate on DMX today, but we do offer Dolly. And Dolly is uh, available in our QTM drive or QOM drive and our QOM drive PS, which is pool and spa. So we do have a pool and spa rated power supply. In addition, since you don't see an ELED DMX pool and spa, the drive can be Dolly or DMX. So you definitely have this as an available option in the exterior as an exterior power supply or pool and spa. Also, we're working always on improving new um, and adding to our uh, offerings, but something we do is a lot of custom work. So this particular apparatus in my hand is two decoders for DMX or RDM sitting on top of LED power drivers on a tray. And this was used as a custom solution for a burial solution for our Q vaults. And we did have a Q vaults, Q set, uh, Q school a lot of cues um, a couple weeks ago hosted by our president and vice president and that is available on our YouTube channel um, or on demand just ask us for it we'll send you the file um, so that's one of our custom solutions that is a fully custom solution in general our power supplies are going to use Eldo lead decoders this is doesn't happen to be one. Um, so we partner with Eldo Lead for either an all-in-one solution in our drive or a um, decoder solution in our QTM ELED. They all have different capacities um, in class two limitations of 100 watt loads. So when we start talking about the details of how to figure out your system and troubleshoot, the class two rules apply, the 96 watt rules apply, and then DMX adds a whole nother layer. Correct. Let's just make sure that when we say 300 watts, it's three individual. Three 96 watt Correct. runs. Correct. So, so and that's true that. of all of our power supplies. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. So digital control systems uh, talk by way of DMX. We could do two hours on DMX. We're not going to. Um, please, again, tons of great information online. 
all your theatrical lighting design friends are not working right now. I'm sure they'll be happy to, uh -huh. <laughs> to tell you about DMX, but it's a digital control signal. It stands for digital multiplex. Uh, it is important to understand a lot of the basics when troubleshooting, which is right. what Metali is going to get into. But the basic idea is a controller is sending a command and the receiver is acting on the command with a color and a brightness, right? So that's the big difference. Whereas we showed that amber strip on a single channel of control of information, it's multiple channels of control in a universe or in channels that are in the universe. 512, just for funsies, goes back to that 8-bit color information where that number that we work with is 256 when we're adding up the available colors. So 256 times 2 is 512, and that's how we get to a universe of DMX. That's way oversimplifying it, <laughs> but it's, it's related. I swear. It's all math, and it's all related. <laughs> cool. All right, so uh, now, <laughs> now Metali is going to talk about sort of a basic arrived. system, and, <laughs> and here we go. Uh, next slide, please, Mike. So on the next slide, we're going to see a basic, typical idea of how to wire a system. Cool, thank you. Um, thank you, Maura. So the most important part about a whole DMX system is the wiring. It's made out of a DMX plus, a minus, and a shield. And yes, you have to wire all three wires in order <laughs> to work. And if you're using a DMX 512 um, cable, you have to wire the shield too. So that's very important and it's very critical or your system will not work. If you just put, plug in two wires, you're gonna get an errors all over. You're gonna get variations of colors. One of the other things too is our DMX um, um, controllers and power supplies meet the DMX standards that they call out for the EA, EAI 485. Um, a couple other things is um, wire length is very important. For example, the maximum you could go from the first controller to the last controller is 300 meters. After that, you have to, you have to contact the, the man, a different, your manufacturer that might need repeaters or boosters because it's all, it's all going to depend. It's very critical because you don't want to have the first module look different than the last module. So you have to look at your system but the way we recommend is going by 32 units. So that's very key, remember that. And then basically what we're trying to do here is basically uh, you have a DMX controller, you have a wire, and you have the system that you're trying to, trying to operate. So all three, are, are, when they're put together, they work smoothly, but each one has its own critical components, and especially the wire. Pay attention to the wire on that point. Next and, slide, please. Yeah, and the wire is, uh install that is not a qtran item that is the wire that you're using in your system yeah. between your control system and your power supply yeah, it has to be it has to be the dmx 512 right. standard because so you want to uh, uh hold to the standard um just as a note because we do have things here we're using our own wire um for testing and for demonstration but we aren't supplying dmx wire just just to be clear mm -hmm. we i did not say this at the beginning see i forgot another housekeeping thing mm -hmm. we are not a controls company. <laughs> so we have Metali, we have every regional manager, we have lots of team members who have lots of experience. Um, but as far as commissioning goes, you're going to reach out to your local rep or you're going to be talking to an integrator. We're going to help. Uh, we're going to offer advice. And that's what we're here to talk about Definitely. basics. But everything we're showing, um, we, we we can help you with. If this is on a project and you need information, just give us a call. But these are going to be good troubleshooting tips for you when you're working at 11 o'clock at night or whenever you can get onto a job site. Correct. Um, so going back to the slide, we'll just show. So again, these are the three controllers that we offer as a solution. These are not major control systems for our full um, building necessarily I, guess, I suppose they could be yeah. you could be clever yeah. um but it's not a big etc or strand or, or any other lehigh but these three controllers are uh have different capacities have different features and benefits have different price points and we're going to talk today about the most robust well we're not going to talk about we're going to talk about all three but we're demonstrating with the de3 Correct. which has two universes of dmx and has a really intuitive on board um, color picker color dial, yeah. um, and scenes that could be recalled and a lot of readouts. So these three items we do sell, as I said, they're under our accessories uh, portion of our website. We support them, but we do not fabricate them. Yeah. So I just want to be clear. Each one comes with a standard program that's built in there for like seven colors. It's like a red, green, blue, 
teal, purple. See? Seven and good a chaser. colors. That's it. There's there only, the, only the good colors. Only the good colors. <laughs> <laughs> if you want extra colors and you want to play around, you can use like an ES, a, ES2 um, standalone, which Nicolati um, has on their website. It's pretty easy to use, and you could d pretty much program your own colors in there. And, it's, and the instructions are, are pretty straightforward, too. So yeah. if you have any questions, you can call your rep or your regional, and then, or you can reach out to me as well. So, right. So they do come with a, a downloadable software. So let's talk about the power supply now, because okay, that's cool. what we're hooked up to. Next slide, Mike. Can we see the next? Oh, cool. sorry. That's okay. I'll take it. <laughs> so this is basically the high level. Um, we have basically where our controller talks to our decoder. If you look at the, the stick, you got that more of the... The box? Yeah. This is... I'll open a box. Yeah. So you look in the back here. Yeah. Oh, I pulled the different one. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> Sorry Go about ahead. that. You have it in there. So when you connect in the, the DMX controller to the power supply, you got to make sure that the power is off completely because sometimes you could short it out. And the last thing I want you to do is give me a call and say it's not working because it's shorted out. <laughs> so it does require independent power. You cannot power this off of your power supply. Right. So if you look at the, the green connector. So this would be yeah. mounted to a J box. Yeah, this is mounted to a J box. And here's the, here's the connector right here. You have the DMX plus, minus, and shield. That wire goes back to the, con back to the power supply. And that's where it starts controlling the DMX. Um, if, if, it's very critical that you get the, the plus, the minus, and the shield correct, because you will not get anything to work if those are off. So that's your basic overview. Now here's we're getting into more details on the pa this particular power supply. Yeah, so this is basically a whole system put together. You have three 100 watt decoders here. You have three independent power supplies, and you also have a DMX stick here, which in this case is a DE3. If you notice here, you see the the DMX input going out. We also improved it by going using um, DMX in and DMX out. So you right can here, see it right there on the. Oops. Yeah, if you can see that more. Move that. Yeah. So there's our terminal blocks that are clearly marked in and out. That, that's that is currently not shown on the ordering guide page, but um, that is an improvement to the physical item. Right. It makes it easy for ins installation. Absolutely. You know, so you're not going to the same input. You know, you don't get confused. You know which one's going to the next um, daisy chain. And like I said, 32 is the max decoders. After that, you got to look at repeaters or boosters. So one of the things we want to talk about is basically how to configure or how to set up your system. For example, a lot of times I get calls and say, hey, is my system working? There's a few things you could, you could do to check, test this out. One of, the, one of the things is if you go onto the, the, the coder and you press all three at the same time, you'll see it go into test mode. It says red, green, blue, white, and then it'll go again, red, green, blue, white. What's th what this is doing is saying you got a, a good decoder and you have a good um, connection at the RGB um, strip level because sometimes we get calls and say hey I don't get red I don't get green and a lot of times it's basically at the connections and each connection is color-coded so they got a red green a blue and a white stripe and a white and, and this is the power black so what that test does is it basically tells you that hey your system is not working your decoder is working now it's time to start DMXing and then that's when you got to start plugging into either into your stick or whatever other DMX controller that you that you have on site. There's a couple other things that we need to mention is each decoder is is, is sent out with the standard one to four address. So you have to make sure that if you're going to individually address each A, B, or C, you got to put it at the right addresses. So you got they might need some commissioning, and you could contact your rep or whoever you know mm -hmm. on the outside for that type of stuff. But one of the things, important things But you too, do have to touch them. This is not, I just want to be clear because we've yeah. had this question. It's not an RDM. No. You have to physically, no, you physically, you do have to physically the address. address these. And the directions are on our, on our website yeah. or you could call in and we could easily tell you how to do it. But one of the things that you, you have to make sure is make sure that it's, it, it is in DMX mode because a lot of times when we get it from the factory, it's factory re, um, default could be color or show. So you want to make sure that it, could accept the DMX signal. And that's done by pressing the menu button here. And you see right there, it has a DMX and it's in a start flashing address one. That tells you that the address yeah. is one. Right there. And then at this point, if you wanted to, you could go press the M and the plus and it starts changing the address. So you can manually change each address for the decoders. So those are very key important factors to make sure to, that you have, have a complete working unit. So you gotta make sure you have a, a good, good wire, 
and um, basically have good power coming in and make sure all the wires are wired co correctly. Yeah, that's a big troubleshooting thing, right? So on our wires, you'd see they're pretty clear. Um, on this RGBW, we have, we've labeled our terminal blocks and our wires, right? So I think you can probably see there's an R, a G, a B, a W, and a plus 24 volt right there on the terminal block. And magically, mm -hmm. red wire, green wire, blue wire, white wire, black wire. So again, we're happy to help and troubleshoot, but some of these are pretty basic and we're trying to make it um, so that it's really user friendly when it gets comes out of the box and to your job site. Yeah. No. Um, so, I mean. Right. So the three buttons, the labeling on the inside, the matching the wires and the using the correct wires. Yeah. And again, we have it shown with this, uh, with our DMX stick. That's the simple coming in right here. Oh, would, did I do I that or did that? <laughs> <laughs> we magically change. See, it's all about color. <laughs> um, uh, but any DMX system is going to wire in there. Okay, so all that DMX, that's a lot of information and a yep. lot of data. Definitely. So what we have coming soon is our app. So sometimes your project doesn't require a full 300 watt power supply and a full control system or even one of our sticks for a single room or a couple of ballrooms. Maybe you just have some under cabinet or some cove or a simple, a simpler um, design. So we are developing, we're working on, and it should be out this month, or it will be out this month, our Qtran app, the Q app. So our Qtran app is a new option, right, for wireless lighting. And you can see on the screen the images are of an iPhone. Um, it's going to be Android and iOS compatible. You're going to have color pickers. We're going to be able to control devices, static white, dynamic white, color, RGB, RGBW, there's going to be a ton of features and benefits. And in a future Q school, we're not sure exactly when, we will do a deep dive into our Q app. Um, it's going to be a complete package, and we're working on that development. And we are going to be releasing it. It was set to release this week at Lightfair. We are not at Lightfair. We're here. But um, we expect to have it ready within the month. Ask your regionals and reps. It is not launched yet, but we'll let you know when. If you have any questions, you know how to get a <laughs> yes. hold of us. You got a regional, you got a rep, mm -hmm. and you could always call in a technical sales number and I'll pick up. <laughs> Absolutely. And the other thing too, um, we are happy to provide samples, not of complete power supplies necessarily, but certainly as you see on the table, we can send out samples with a very simple controller. Um, we have two questions. Oh, we do have two questions. Uh, one is, uh, will the Qtran app replace the stick? And kind of a related question is, what is a dongle? That is a, what is a dongle? <laughs> Who wants to take the dongle question? Dongle is just a word. <laughs> it's okay. It's, it's a, it's it's a, a wireless radio, radio wireless um, yeah. interface, right? It's yeah. a physical, it is a physical piece of hardware. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. It's a piece of hardware <laughs> included <laughs> in the set uh, to communicate wirelessly from your devices and your power to your phone. There you go. Will the Q app replace the sticks? Will the Q app replace the sticks? No, absolutely not, because the sticks do one kind of job and the Q app does another job. So could work in tandem, they could work in tandem, absolutely. Anything else, Gelman? <gasps> cool. No. All right. Well, we are here. Thank you. I think we probably went over time a little bit, um, but we're going to stick around for a few. If any questions pop up, please ask the questions of us, of your regional, of your rep. Um, let us know what you think, what you think you'd like to see added. Uh, we're always working on improvements. I was saying earlier, the RGBW is being improved. So you'll probably see something within a few months, some improvements maybe? RGBW? Yes. yes. So we're working on a new substrate. Pa um, we are, uh, and like I said, the RGB is now new and improved. So please let us know. Please let us know what questions you have. And we are, thank you so much for spending your afternoon with us. We know you spend a lot of time in front of your screens. So every Tuesday, um, here we are yeah. for the well, foreseeable future. Definitely. Well, <laughs> thank you guys and happy. Thank you.